What's going on guys, so we're looking at the big trade the Oilers made today, signing Tyson Berry, Reed Schaefer, a first and fourth round pick to the Nashville Predators for Matias Ekholm and a sixth. Honestly, this trade surprised me. We knew that they were eyeing Chick Rinder Ekholm. I just didn't accept them to give up Tyson Berry, the guy like quarterbacks their power play, which is the number one power play in the NHL. I know they have Evan Bouchard, who's like a solid young defenseman, could take over Berry's role, but I don't know. I was just kind of shocked, honestly, to see them trade Berry when the power play is clicking so well. We'll see, obviously, if that was the right move or not, as Ekholm is a very good defenseman. Now, now before we get to that trade, guys, there was actually a second trade that was made today, a smaller one, signing Pugliarby, the Carolina Hurricanes, for Patrick Pistula. Uh, Pistula here is like an okay prospect, 21-66, low top six. I have him in game. Was a third-round pick back in 2019. Currently playing in the Finnish League there. He's a sniper. And they sent over Jesse Pugliarby, who, as we all know, former fourth overall pick back in 2016. Never really found his game with the Oilers. Like, he's had, you know, flashes here and there, but been in and out of the lineup, obviously went back to Finland for a bit. I feel like the Oilers should have gotten more for Pugliarvi, and I really thought when they traded him here for Pistula that they were going to have like a reason for it. But when you look at the Barry Ekholm trade, they only added 1.5 million and Pugliarvi here saved them three. So I'm wondering if they're not done yet. Maybe they add another piece that's in that 1.5 to $2 million range. But in case you guys are wondering, obviously the Hurricanes win this trade in real life and in game. Uh, Pugliarvi at least double the value of Pistula, who's on the block for the Hurricanes. They want Pugliarvi. And yeah, there you go. It's a little bonus trade for you guys. Next year, though, we'll go to Nashville. As I mentioned, they get Matias Eichholm back, who's a very solid defenseman. Um, as you guys can see here, in-game, he's actually on the block by the Preds. 32 years old, 86 overall, making 6.2 for the next four years. He's a guy that could maybe even be an 87. He's very solid defensively, but he's also got some offense to his game as well. Uh, if you guys look at his career stats here, you can see he's put up like 44 points before, which isn't bad for a guy who's like so good in his own end. This year he's not producing quite as much, but obviously Nashville hasn't been as good this year either. So I think it's a really good return for the Oilers. I just think they gave up a little bit too much because... I mean, Ekholm is solid, but I just can't believe they're breaking up the number one power play in the NHL. Again, could Bouchard fit into their fine? Maybe, but if he was able to fit into their fine, why was he already playing there? That's kind of just, you know, the question I'm asking myself. Now with Ekholm, guys, you always also get back a 2024 sixth round pick. And again, the big piece they're sending over is probably the first round pick. Um, that's actually the first round pick in 2023. Hopefully for Oilers fans, it's the late first round pick. Um, also, too, they're sending over a fourth round pick in 2024. On top of that, as I mentioned, Tyson Berry. See how he does on Nashville as well. Like, they already have their kind of number one offensive defenseman in Roman Yossi, who's the captain. Led all defensemen in points last year. So, is Berry going to be on the top power play with him? We'll be on the second power play. I'm curious to see how he's used. Should mention, too, uh, Berry's here is actually signed for one more year at $4.3 million. So, Obviously, his cap hit there definitely helps make the trade easier for the Oilers. And then Reed Shaver here, they actually just drafted last year in the first round. I believe it was the last pick of the first round. I think this season in Seattle, he's like a point per game, playing on a pretty stacked team. Like they added Brad Lambert, Dylan Gunther. They got Korchinski on D. So uh, he's probably going to make a run at the Memorial Cup here. Should mention too, in regards to Ekholm, he's making 6.25 for four more years. And one very strange thing the Predators did, I have no idea why they did this. They retained 250K on his salary. So... It's not really a lot of money or anything, but it's more so like you can only retain salary, I think, on three players. So 250K, and now you can only retain salary on two more players for the next three years. It's a very interesting choice. Obviously, it comes down to like perfectly six million, but I don't know. It's just such a weird thing to me. So um, looking at the trade values here, even with 250K retained, I feel like Nashville has to say yes. Like look at the amount of value they're getting. About double. They want the fourth. They want Schaefer. Barry's got some value. Ekholm's on the block. Medium difficulty. Let's see what they say here. And yeah, trade is accepted as you'd expect. So after the trade, guys, here's what the Oilers lines are going to look like. We got Nuge McDavid Yamamoto on that first line. Nuge is having a really good year too, not just McDavid Drysaddle. Uh, same goes for Hyman actually on that second line with Drysaddle Kane. Uh, third line here, Fogel, McLeod, Yanmark. Fogel is a guy everybody thought was going to get traded. So then the fact they ended up trading Pugliarvi instead, along with Barry, kind of a surprise. Fourth line here, Costin, Ryan, Shore. Defensively now, you got Nurse Ekholm on that top pair. I mean, that's a big, nasty top pair. They're both 6'4". It'll be very tough to play against for sure. CC Kulak, second pair. Broberg, Bouchard on the bottom pair. So a couple of young defensemen who are definitely, you know, capable of eating up extra minutes, I think, and really coming into their own as true NHL defensemen. Goaltending-wise, you still got Skinner and Campbell. I mean, Skinner was literally an all-star goalie this year. So uh, that's a good sign for Oilers fans. Still, though, like I said, I can't believe they gave up Barry. He was like a fan favorite in that locker room. So I wonder if there's going to be any chemistry issues there. Will they be upset or not? I feel like it's one of those things where if they're out in the first round, they're upset. If they go in and win the Stanley Cup, they're happy with the trade. Now, uh, next year, guys, I'll show you what Ekman looks like as a member of the Edmonton Oilers. For now, he plays his entire 12-year career with the National Predators. So definitely a little bit strange seeing him in these colors. But there you have it, Ekman 14, member of the Edmonton Oilers for not only this season, but 
the next three as well. Next year, guys, we'll try this trade from Nationals' perspective. All right, guys, so this is actually kind of surprising. As you can see here, the Oilers aren't interested in Ekholm, nor do they have Barry or Schaefer on the block. Usually, like, a contending team would have a prospect like Schaefer on the block. A rebuilding team would have Barry on the block. They don't have either. Same with the first. Only the fourth. Now, I'm retaining 250k on Ekholm, which apparently isn't enough. Looks like I'll probably have to retain 500k just because when I'm the Oilers, I can, like, send guys down, but the computers never do that. Uh, 500k is not enough either. 625, okay, so basically what it's supposed to be. I don't think it's going to matter though. Again, you can see there the Oilers trade value is at least double ours, almost triple it looks like, but uh, still we'll give it a shot here. And yeah, trade's rejected. So um, in game, EA feels like Nashville won this trade. And I feel like I got to agree as even though Ekholm is a very solid defenseman, you get a first round pick, a former first round pick prospect who's obviously still young, producing point per game in the WHL. Tyson Berry, even if he's like not part of your long-term future, I could definitely see them flipping him at next year's deadline for like at least a second round pick. Maybe they'll pull another Tanner Jinho and get multiple picks for him. Who knows? So yeah, I really like this return for Nashville. Obviously Edmonton, if they can go on a deep playoff run, it's a solid trade for them too. And after the trade, here's what the Preds decor might look like. I've got Yossi Favre on the top pair, Barry McDonough on the second, with Lozon and Carrier on the bottom pairing. Also two scratches, a couple options. Burrow Vexky there, Cal Foot, of course, they got back for Tanner Jano. So, I mean, like, it's still not a terrible decor. And again, if the Preds are building for the future here, I feel like they just made a couple of really nice moves. Now, I'll show you guys what Barry looks like on the National Predators. So, right you guys can see Barry in the yellow and blue. I actually really like his game face. Looks like one of the more accurate ones we have. Uh, right number 22 there. Obviously, this is his fourth team after a bunch of seasons in Colorado, one with Toronto, and then going to Edmonton. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I actually see on Twitter, as I'm finishing up recording, Jonathan Quick just got traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets for, I think, Gavrikov, Corpusalo, and some other moving parts. So stay tuned for that one. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss it. And as always, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave that thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.